All right. So because it's raining outside, I just figured we'd do this today. Here we have a Dell Latitude 2100 notebook. No, I said that wrong. It's not a notebook. It is a netbook. Now why in 2020 would I have one of these and be uh, concerned with it at all? It's a 32-bit machine with an N270 Atom CPU. Well, the whole reason I bought this was because, remember, a couple years ago we had Meltdown and Spectre they were all worried about? Or Spectre, or... Well, anyways, uh, this little one right here, they said that the processor was not uh, impacted by it. And I have no idea if that's really true now or not with the new revelations that come out, but uh, no one seems to really care about it anymore, but I can just keep this one around. and uh, The problem that I've had, though, is that it is a 32-bit machine. Um, Ubuntu, which a lot of... There's a lot of Ubuntu derivatives now. Uh, Ubuntu has stopped with their 32-bit kernel support. So the uh, Linux Mint that I had running on it would be supported up until 2023, I think. Uh, well, whatever. I did a uh, timer to see how long it takes to boot. It uh, took about 2 minutes and 14 seconds to get from the restart BIOS screen up until where I had a rendered start page in Firefox. Two minutes and 14 seconds. Now, it was me putting in two passwords. But, uh, so yeah, today, we're going to put that in it and see if it helps any. All right, so <clears throat> here it is with the hard drive still in it. And I'm just doing a real quick boot. Um, once we get into the desktop, I'll show you how slow it is to start up the web browser. All right, well, the desktop background just popped up. And there is Firefox. I don't know if I can't remember if I double click or not. Probably not. The Windows noise was not this thing. That was my desktop computer letting me know that Rufus has finished burning or writing an image. Oh no, see, I didn't need to click it twice. It has Rufus is done burning or writing a USB drive with a install ISO image for Mint 19.3. Make that Linux Mint 19.3. This hasn't fully rendered yet. Reading fonts. There we go. Man, that took a long time. All right, well, it takes about 30 seconds to shut down now, too. Um, keyboard off already. And that's what it looks like underneath. There's the processor. And uh, earlier I took this out and just tried to get some of the dust out of it. Uh, applied some new thermal paste to that. There's the hard drive that we're going to be pulling out and replacing. And, uh, it comes with 1 gig of RAM. There, you can see. It's all already. And then there is an expansion module. And uh, I think I put that 1 gig stick in there. It's got a total of 2 gig right now. There's the Wi-Fi card. So, yeah, let's uh, get to work. And there they are, side by side. The... Uh original 80 gig hard drive it was a 5400 rpm drive which is nice instead of a 4200 rpm drive that was in some netbooks uh date code on it says where is it at? oh yeah 10422 um so i guess that's 2010 uh, it would make sense because inside the netbook itself i found some stickers saying april and may of 2010 was manufacture date so this is 80 gig this is 120 gig um, I've seen I've seen in some older desktops when I put these in there it's to really uh, bring it back to life it seems um, little screws they had in here has some blue loctite on them and they were really hard to get out I couldn't get my prescription screwdriver my prescribed small precision screwdriver to get those out and I finally found a number one bit and was able to get my uh, 
a bigger handle on it. I didn't use the uh, power screwdriver part. I locked it down. So next is to put that bracket on with the screws, slap it in there, and uh, see if we can get uh, Mint, Linux Mint installed. Okay, so it's not all completely back together, but I did uh, put the keyboard back in hooked up so it wasn't a problem typing when getting all this started. So got the USB plugged in. I'm going to hit the power and uh, see what happens. Hey, look at that. Um, start, maybe? Oh, well, yeah, I guess start because I, I didn't select anything and it went ahead without me. Okay, well, I mean, it took a while off of a thumb drive, but it's USB 2 and all that, so no surprise. I guess we just do this. All right, well, after a few seconds, it uh, came up with the install dialog. So I guess we'll just work like this. All right. Well, this is going to take quite a while, uh, mainly because of the the thumb drive and USB and the processor. I don't think it's going to be a thing with the solid state drive. So yeah, I will uh, come back to you and let you know when we're all done. Well, that's really annoying. Even though the Wi-Fi worked during the installation, and uh, it said that you know plug in the USB drive when trying to enable the Wi-Fi drivers. It would just keep on failing. I finally hooked up an Ethernet connection, and it's thinking about it. Well, sorry for the background noise. This took so long I put the wash in. So here we are, about an hour and a half later. Uh, install took about 40 minutes. Slow thumb drive, and then I had to install all the updates where I wanted to, and that took you know a little less than an hour. So here we are, and I've rebooted once or twice. To make sure everything was uh, good with any kernel updates. So here we're going to just do a reboot and we'll see how long it takes to reboot and get into a web browser. Now shutting down does take a lot less time. It was taking almost 30 seconds before. Now it's only like you know five or six seconds and it shut down. So that in itself is a, uh, a big improvement. Stand by. All right. Well, we're getting close. Oh, we got a desktop. Maybe. It is almost there. There we go. All right. Let's pull up Firefox. Now, the start page here isn't the same, so it's not quite a fair test to say apples to apples. But um, I'm going to go through here in just a moment. Focus. And, uh, oh, nope, there it is. There it is. It, it is resolving to a similar page. All right, there it is. It's done. Uh, I'm going to go through and time it and see how long it took. All right, so I just uh, went through it again. Uh, timing, since I use my phone as my stopwatch and as my camera. Yeah, it's not uh, super impressive. So originally I was at uh, 2.14 with the hard drive to get to this point. And uh, with a fresh install here, I am at a minute and 46 seconds. So while there are some definite differences in uh, program startup 
and the amount of time it takes to shut down and the feel of it when it boots up is really not a huge advantage. To be honest, that's not a huge surprise. I have another netbook. It's uh, made by a different company. And when I installed a solid state drive in it, it still it doesn't have the same snappy performance that uh, you know my desktop and things like that do. So I'm probably going to take that thing out and use that with my o Odroid project. And I'm probably going to take put that back in and wipe it, do a fresh install without the uh, hard drift, hard disk encryption, and uh, probably put it up for sale locally. If anyone ever wondered what YouTube was like on an Atom processor, since I had experienced this before on a desktop system, yeah, it's not all that great. This is uh, my original unboxing video for the Odroid C4. If you haven't seen that, take a look. But, uh, yeah, so a little bit ago I was trying to resize it and see what the quality was. It's uh, streaming at 480p, but uh, it had locked up. The video was still, the audio was still running, and uh, <laughs> so it's not a great experience. Well, that's it. Uh, hopefully someone would find this interesting, maybe helpful in making a decision. Uh, it has taken a long time to get here for me. It felt like it took a little bit too long to be worth it. Um, so, yeah. Thank you so much. Hopefully it wasn't terrible. Have a great day.